Somehow I think we've been putting it off like it's going to be our grandchildren's problem and I think the big joke is no, no, it's our problem. It's happening now and we have to do something to fix it. You have 660,000 plastic, 32 ounce plastic bottles a day would be being produced in that plant. It's irresponsible to bottle water and to have value added products during the time, particularly when we're in such an extreme drought. We, we don't want to ship that out in little bottles uh, at $3 a bottle when, when it's needed to grow our crops and raise our children. Uh, it's much more important than what Crystal Geyser has in mind. There needs to be an environmental study. We need to know what is under this mountain. Oh, man who stole water. We'll swim forevermore, but it never reached that land on that golden shore. How does our water flow from the mountaintop down through this river, Sacramento River, all the way down to the bay in San Francisco? Back in 1998, uh, Dannon International came in and built a bottling plant. There was never um, any environmental impact report done, and people in the neighborhood had problems with their wells. And so there was never any place for those folks to go to get help. People in the neighborhood, when Coca-Cola was fully pumping all of their, the water that they were using, they were losing their well water. It was coming out sand and dirt. I've drilled wells here uh, since the early 1970s, and uh, I've been in the water business uh, for many, many of those years. So uh, I've seen it all, and, and this is not good. <laughs> so we can tell by what happened then that this is not a safe situation, considering now we are in a drought. Crystal Geysers here, they bought the plant from Coca-Cola in 2012. They were told by the county that they could open up without any kind of sequel or environmental review. And we've been fighting that, um, both uh, the Gateway Neighborhood Association and um, a local group here called Water. And we were very concerned about the possible environmental effects of the water extraction from these commercial wells, the issues of truck traffic through town, the issues of plastic bottle production, as well as the noise, light, and uh, odor noises coming, uh, odors coming from the operations of this plant. We have not been able to get anywhere um, letting, letting the county know that real neighbors had real issues during Coca-Cola and Dannon days. It's just falling on deaf ears. And in 2012, we were able to obtain a, uh, one of the results from those monitoring wells. And we found um, many times over the loud limit of phthalates, which is a plastic, um, it's a chemical leaching out of plastic bottle manufacturing and into the rinse water. From what we could see of the testing that was done while they were in, it was Dannon, and then it was turned over to Coca-Cola, that it was damaging the aquifer. We are in a drought, and the city council is not at this point helping us. Uh, instead of questioning and asking for an environmental review before Crystal Geyser comes in, they're just uh, blatantly giving away the ranch and we don't want to see that. The issues of plastic bottles, it, both the pollution that it causes around the world with the plastic waste as well as local uh, chemical pollution from bottle manufacturing. None of these things had been considered before when the earlier plant was put in. And we think all of these new issues require a new study. Because they're, they're not just bottling water. They're going to have teas, they're going to have sugars, and all of that has to be flushed out of their system and into our sewer plant. And for the last year, the city has been asking them what are you going to be dumping into the sewer? And they've been unable to get those simple answers from Crystal Geyser. So we've become very involved in trying to pressure the Board of Supervisors. When they refuse to do anything, 
We worked with the city council in trying to get go to city council meetings, mobilizing public opinion to uh, have the city council have an environmental impact report. Well, the environmental impact report is typically paid for by the proponent, by the by the business coming in. That's that's the standard in California. And Crystal Geyser uh, was down in Orland trying to open up a plant. The court decided down there that they had to do an environmental impact report. And rather than do one, they left town. And Californians all need to come together and protect our water. Our water is our life, is our food. We're supplying food for the entire country. Up here in Mount Shasta, we're still breaking down the myth that we're water rich. We used to be water rich. We would have, you know, 20, 20 foot snow banks up on the top of the mountain. We don't have that anymore. And so it's a different time and it calls for, for a different way of being on the planet and, and especially in our town. We need to get everybody involved from here right down to the Bay Area. You know, it's, this, is a big, this is a big watershed and it needs to be shared accordingly. Uh, so local people will, will undoubtedly be affected, and as well as everybody below us. Well, we need help. We need uh, we need the not only the state of California to wake up, but all other areas to let to let their legislatures know that that we can do better. That we need to make laws um, that protect not only towns but protect the water. Because without the water, we don't have communities. We don't have businesses. We've got nothing. It's the lifeblood of the planet. Pray it down on your knees. You got nothing left to sell.